long-range plan leading to a piloted military space capability was presented to USAF headquarters by the Air Force Systems Command in October 1961. An important part of this plan was acceleration of the dinosaur program. After review by the Department of Defense, a major redirection of the dinosaur program was approved. The redirection deleted suborbital flights with a Titan II booster in favor of an orbital flight test program and directed that the Titan III launch vehicle be used. Upon notice of program redirection, all efforts specifically associated with a Titan II booster and the suborbital phase of the program was terminated. Although the basic glider was designed for orbital flight, some modifications of subsystems are necessary for the redirected program. Additional modification to the glider will be necessary if the booster environment changes significantly from that used in the previous design. The Step 1 system mock-up inspection held at Boeing in September 1961 verified the glider configuration and subsystem compatibility. Principal changes to the glider resulting from the mock-up included a new instrument panel configuration resulting from a general repositioning of the instruments and a change in control switches. Minor changes also were made to pilot accommodations, including the seat, restraint system, handle shapes, and the mechanization involved in these items. Rearrangement of equipment for the secondary power and environmental control subsystems was initiated to improve their accessibility and maintenance. Aerodynamic refinements of the glider external shape include the addition of a ramp to the upper aft portion of the glider body to improve yaw stability at transonic Mach numbers and to reduce elevon hinge moments at low supersonic speeds. An 83-inch cylindrical section 10 feet in diameter has been added to the aft end of the transition section, giving an overall length of 180 inches. This additional volume will provide room for expendables and subsystems required for extended duration flights. Other external configuration refinements include the elimination of the speed brake from the glider fuselage and incorporation of this function in the rudder movement. Fin thickness has been increased and fin to elevon gap reduced, but the wing plan form is unchanged. Major progress has been made in the solution of technological problems associated with development of the glider. Parallel programs are in progress to develop a satisfactory nose cap. Vought Astronautics, under contract to Boeing, developed and tested a concept using zirconia pin inserts embedded in a graphite shell. Preliminary tests on small-scale caps of this type were successful, but full-scale nose caps failed under simulated re-entry test conditions. The zirconia cement retaining the pins cracked, several pins failed, and the graphite shell cracked. These results led to the design of a modified concept using overlapping zirconia tiles pinned to a graphite cap. The tile concept is scheduled to be tested in September 1962. The parallel development program at Boeing is directed toward a different nose cap concept, a one-piece cap molded completely of zirconia. Scale test specimens, both with and without reinforcement, were initially tested at temperatures up to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The success of the scale tests led to construction of full-size zirconia caps for development testing. A paper honeycomb is used in molding and pressing the nose cap. A platinum-rhodium wire mesh reinforcement is used. During firing, the paper honeycomb burns out, leaving surface crevices which provide stress relief for the extreme temperature gradients that will develop on the outer surface during re-entry. One of the nose cap programs will be dropped as soon as success is assured with the most promising concept. Much of the glider external skin will be fabricated from high temperature refractory alloy metals. Extensive studies and tests of the comparative properties of columbium and molybdenum alloys have been completed to determine the optimum application of each metal. Technical evaluation was made based on comparative factors of oxidation life, high temperature emittance, strength, ductility, weight, and fabrication problems, as well as material availability. Although the molybdenum alloy exhibits more desirable characteristics at extreme high temperatures, 
Columbium alloy has the superior ductility required for ease of fabrication and assurance of more producible and reliable structural components. In general, skin areas exposed to temperature extremes ranging up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, such as leading edges and the Elevon lower surface panels, will be fabricated from molybdenum alloy. Columbium alloy will be used for the outer skin of the lower wing surface, insulated panels, vertical stabilizers, and window heat shield, where temperatures approach 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Rene 41 will be used for all other external surfaces. The effect of acceleration rocket motor firing has been investigated in a series of tests. Staging pressure and heating rates in the transition section during separation were determined by scale model staging tests. Data obtained during early tests showed severe transient heating rates on the heat deflector over the acceleration rocket thrust vector control package, but there was no damage. Severe burns directly behind the acceleration rocket motor nozzles led to tests later in the series to evaluate ablative coverings for the blast shield. Other scale model tests were conducted in the Boeing supersonic wind tunnel to study the acceleration rocket exhaust flow field. Heat and pressure measurements were made to determine the need for thermal protection. High-speed photography shows the rocket exhaust flow pattern at one test condition equivalent to Mach 1.5 at an altitude of 17,000 feet. The burning particles are aluminum oxide in the propellant, which freezes on the cold rocket nozzles at the start of firing. As the nozzles and oxide are heated, the particles burn off. Temperature data derived from this test series established insulation requirements in the transition. The pressure data was used in analyses of glider flight performance. Thiokol has completed the first full-scale acceleration rocket motor. This motor had a heavyweight case, but all internal components were of the flight weight configuration. Three of the nozzles were modified by Thiokol. Data from the first firing indicated that motor performance was within specification limits. Examination of the tested motor showed that the flight weight internal components had performed well, but the nozzle not modified by Thiokol failed during firing. The glider environmental control and secondary power subsystems are dependent on use of cryogenic hydrogen and oxygen for their operation and performance. Prototype hydrogen fuel tanks have been successfully fabricated for development testing. These 45-inch diameter inner tank hemispheres were formed from aluminum alloy plates on a large capacity spin lathe. After the inner tank is assembled, it is insulated with 28 alternate layers of dexaglass and thin aluminum foil in a controlled environment area. The outer shell is made from a thin stainless steel sheet. This shell is made up of welded segments or gores. An alternate method of fabricating the hemispheres is being investigated to simplify construction and to reduce handling and the number of critical welds. When the installation of the outer shell is complete, a vacuum is drawn between the two shells to decrease thermal conductivity. Effectiveness of the tank insulation has been satisfactorily demonstrated by boil-off tests on a 17-inch nitrogen tank. Tank design and manufacturing techniques have been confirmed through thermal and vibration environment tests, external loads tests, and internal pressure to failure. Burst of the first tank occurred at well above the required pressure. The tank ruptured in the base metal.